let's talk a little bit about synchronous versus asynchronous events. I want you to think about two different things in your life. One is a phone call that you're sharing with your friend, and the other is a texting session that you're sharing with another friend. Think a little bit about what defines this relationship versus this relationship. I want you to focus a little bit on the element of time. Can a phone call take place if both parties are not present at the same time? What about a texting session? What happens if you're trying to make a phone call and the other person's not there? What happens if you send a text and the other person's not there? I want you to think about these, the differences between these two scenarios. Now I'm going to paint a third scenario and your job is to figure out is that third scenario more like this or is it more like this? Let's say you've ordered a package from Amazon. So you've gone to your computer and sent the order in. And then three days later, the UPS truck driver shows up, takes out the package, and knocks on your door and hands it to you. Is that scenario more like the phone call or the texting session? Hopefully, you agree that it's more like the texting session. The idea here is that you can send a text to somebody, and they don't have to be there waiting for the text or even looking at their phone. They may be off eating dinner or driving a car, and they may not get to your text for several minutes or perhaps even hours or days. But eventually they'll return your text and the conversation can continue. We say this is an asynchronous event because it doesn't really involve time. In comparison, a phone call is a synchronous event. You have to take turns, you have to both be on the call, and you have to both be present for the entirety of the call. When you order a package, this is an asynchronous event. You've use the computer to order the package and then the service a combination of Amazon and UPS are delivering the package to you. You don't know exactly when the package is going to arrive but when it eventually does you have to stop doing what you're doing and receive the package. We're going to talk now about asynchronous processing in general. Look at this main thread. I want you to imagine that these are the instructions that a computer is executing and then somewhere along the way it shoots off this other instruction to the side asking for a service to be implemented. The service box does what's requested by the main thread and returns an answer. Meanwhile, main execution flow is still continuing. At some point, the program has to stop and handle this service response, and then it can continue with its main thread of execution. So we see here that the asynchronous processing basically has a, a non-timed element here because it does not know when this service is going to respond. Whereas the tiny DB that you worked with before is synchronous, Firebase is asynchronous. We're going to talk a little bit about why that is. TinyDB stores information on your phone. So when you read or write to TinyDB, it works pretty much the same way as when you read or write to any variable in your code. There's no asynchronous event here because the computer knows exactly how long it's going to take to do the read or the write operation. So it merely waits and it suspends the thread until everything has been returned by the TinyDB. But we can't do that when we make a request over the internet because we just don't know how long the response is going to take. Consider for example a web database like Firebase. Here the information is not locally stored. We have to send a message over the internet to the Firebase database and then we have to wait for a reply. As was mentioned before, we don't know exactly when this response is going to occur. That's what makes Firebase asynchronous versus TinyDB, which was synchronous. App Inventor 2 handles asynchronous communication with Firebase using the get value got value pair. The get value, shown in purple, is synchronous because in your code you know exactly when the request to the database is going to be made, but the response is asynchronous and triggers an event. By choosing what code to put in here, you can determine what action the program will take when information is received from the database. Lastly, let's take a look at some of the features of Firebase and why it's such an improvement over what came before. Prior to Firebase, we used another public database called TinyWebDB. This is one shown here that I built for my school. The way this works is you have a key and a value pair. So this is known as the tag also. And what you can do is you can use any tag you want and then you can associate a value with it. These parentheses here suggest that there's a list of information stored here. 
Here's a more simple combination which uses a single key and a single value. If you want information returned to you, you supply the key to the database and the database returns the value stored at that key. What you see up here is the web interface for a tiny WebDB. You can write and read from the database directly by using uh, the, this, inf this facility here. Now let's have a quick look at Firebase. Whereas this is the user interface for TinyWebDB, this is the user interface for Firebase. Data in Firebase can be added and deleted and modified directly by the user from this interface. You can see that Firebase is a lot more sophisticated and has many, many more features. Despite this, it is much easier to set up a basic Firebase database than it is to set up a tiny WebDB database. And finally, whereas in tiny WebDB, any user who had access to this URL could come in here and overwrite data that belonged to somebody else simply by accessing the same key, we don't get that sort of same issue with Firebase because Firebase uses a token authentication system to restrict access to data for only the owner. If you do want to share your data with other people, all you have to do is give them a copy of your app. But other people who have a different app cannot get access to your data. And one final Firebase feature we want to mention, even though we won't be using this feature in our app, is that an app can be informed by Firebase if some other user has changed its data.